Uh, no, I wasn't political. Was I was elected. Uh, because you said uh, they were afraid of being accused of racial profiling. So do you condone racial profiling in general? Do you think there should be some racial profiling? If somebody thinks it's better, right? Yeah, it's better. If somebody thinks bad things are going on, you have to report it. It should not be racial profiling. And they thought something bad was going on, and they didn't report it. Not good. Okay? So can you elaborate a little bit on your no, comments I mean, about no, racial profiling? Should, no, I, there's nothing to elaborate. I think you're in the way of the camera, by the way. You okay? I'm trying to make him look good, right? right? No. The story was that they didn't want to racially profile. In the meantime, a lot of people got killed. We have to use common sense. People. I heard the apartment was loaded up with bombs and with guns. But nobody would ever assume that it was the case. What would you do? Well, to... I don't know. When you have pipe bombs lying all over the floor, I don't think they're regular people. When you have pipe bombs all over the floor, so I don't think they're regular people. Suppose they slipped Where's under your the camera, crack. by the way? Right, yeah. Well, this man has a microphone right in there. He's shooting, bro. <laughs> they slipped under the cracks, though. What do you think should be done differently well, to avoid uh, something again, like this? There happen? were people that knew bad things were going on. I mean, people knew that bad things were going on. and. They didn't report it because of racial profiling. But I don't think they were regular people. To me, they're not regular people. To me, they were criminals, and it's too bad somebody didn't find out about it sooner. What are your thoughts on the New York Times editorial today on the gun epidemic in America? Yeah. Well, I feel very strongly that people in this country and actually you know, the world need protection. If you look at Paris, they didn't have guns, and they were slaughtered. If you look at what happened in California, they didn't have guns, they were slaughtered. So I think it would have been a lot better if they had guns in that room, somebody to protect. They could have protected themselves if they had guns. The editorial said that in some ways, all shooting sprees are acts of terrorism. Do you, do you agree with that? What's your thought on that? Well, this was a terrorism. I mean, this one was terrorism. But, uh, but not, all I, shooting I can't sprees? No, I, I don't know. It's uh, You can look at it that way, but this was certainly when you look at this, this was extremists. This was Muslim extremists, and this is a real problem. Uh, and this is certainly terrorism at a high level. Mr. Trump, yesterday, um, cameras and reporters were yeah. cameras and reporters were allowed into the home of one of the suspects in the shooting. But we saw things like photographs, IDs, uh, bank statements. But the FBI said that the search was over in that house. What was your reaction? Well, I thought the whole scene was very strange. I mean, the event just took place and everybody's going in like it's a museum. I thought it was pretty strange myself to see it. But, uh, you know, look, they had weapons, they had pipe bombs, they had a lot of things that, when you look at pipe bombs all over the floor, and then the mother was there and she didn't notice anything different, people knew what they were going to do. People in their family, in my opinion, knew what they were going to do, and they didn't report it. Did that scene raise any concerns um, in terms of how the FBI has handled this Well, I'm not going to criticize the FBI because I think they've done a great job over the years, but it was a strange thing that so many people were allowed to go in and just look, and so quickly. Mr. Trump, Mr. Trump, Mr. Trump, Mr. Trump, Trump to you no, we'll finish. finish. On a different topic, um, some conservatives have started to call either you or your rhetoric fascist. There's one Jeb Bush donor who says he wants to take out an ad by calling you narcissistic and even comparing you to Hitler and Mussolini. What is your reaction to that? 
Well, look, Jeb Bush is so low in the polls. In your poll, he's like, at, what, three? I mean, he's might as well go home and forget it because he's wasting his time. And I understand his supporters are very upset because a lot of people thought that I was the one that brought him down. He's a low-energy person. I said it. And we can't take chances in putting the wrong person in office. We have too many things going in this country, too many problems. Uh, he does have some donors that are very upset. I don't take donors, that's a nice one. I'm self-funding my campaign. Um, but they better make sure that they're very accurate if they're right about me or they'll have problems. But do you react to being called the fascist? Um, they'll call me whatever they want. I mean, they call other people. I hear them saying very negative things about other people too. Every campaign is calling everybody else bad names because they want to try and get votes. But based on the CNN poll, I have most of the votes. Does that offend you? Uh, it's a terrible thing to be called, but they're trying to get votes. He's desperate. You know, Jeb is desperate right now. He's doing very badly, and he's a desperate person. And I think he spent $48 million, and I've spent nothing. And he's got nothing, and I've got, you know, I'm leading by a lot. So, you know, it's uh, it's too bad that they have to feel that way, actually. Have you noticed a shift in how the media treats you? I think they're treating me pretty much the same. I don't think I've been treated much differently. I think people are very impressed with the last set of poll numbers. Not only CNN, but some of the others that have come out have been very, very strong. Some of the local ones that have come out, like I'm leading Iowa, leading, if you look at South Carolina, that's through the roof. If you look at New Hampshire, it's through the roof. But you know, look, the press, some people in the press are extremely fair and professional, and others are very dishonest. But I've been saying that for, you know, for a long time. Well, we're going to have to start looking at things, and I'll probably have a pretty good statement to make next week because I feel very strongly about it. But we're going to have to start looking at people very closely because we can't allow this to happen to our country. We just can't. So we'll start looking at people very, very closely. So you're not ruling out pulling back on Lisa? I'm not ruling out anything. I don't rule out anything. If people come in, they blow up people, and they shoot people, and they kill people, I don't rule out anything. So, in fact, today, I noticed that when I said we have to be vigilant, I noticed a couple of the people now would say we have to be vigilant. They're using my same words. The same people I'm running against, they're using my words. But we have to indeed be vigilant. And that includes with mosques, okay? Now they're all saying, well, I think Trump was right. But now that includes with mosques. And we better be smart, okay? President Obama uh, came a little bit closer today to getting to say the term radical Islam. He's talking about hateful ideologies. Sam Who Bernard, said that? President Obama today. In the it's about time, but that's not there. He's not there. I was say, so do you, how far much farther do you think he should go and... He should call it what it is. He should call it what it is, right? Radical, Islamic, terrorists, that's what it is. Or he could say, I mean, he could, there are other terms. But he has to call it what it is. Do you think this is a civilizational wall of uh, war, as Monrovia was put This is a war. We're in a war. And if we're not smart, and if we're not really cunning, and if we don't beat them to the punch, it's going to be very ugly over here. It's going to be very bad. Evangelicals, Tea Party, it says, look, I mean, I'm leading by a lot. I do well with everybody. But in particular, I do well with certain groups. But I'm doing very well with college educators. Thank you. Thank you. Very good question. Mr. Trump. 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 They're special people. Chuck, you know, and Sam, they love this part of the state. Uh, I feel a little bit longer to get here. I feel a little bit further west. But I love this part of the state. I've been here before, but I love this part of the state. Thank you. It's a very, it's a very important part of the state. It's a tough. It's the military. Take care of our vets.
take care of our wounded warriors who are these incredible people that suffer so greatly and they always have a smile on their face. It's amazing. And we're going to take care of our wounded warriors and we're going to take care of our wounded And we're going to have a real respect. Nobody's going to mess with us. Mr. Trump, since you said that you will be putting out your health statement, you said you you will be putting out your health report soon. Um, are there any health issues you've had in the past that the public should be aware of? No, I haven't. Uh, there's none, and we'll put it out probably Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And I think you'll see very good, great blood pressure, no problems, no, no anything, joints, everything's good. So um, the doctor is doing it now in conjunction with major, he's one of, you know, he's a person at one of the major hospitals. And I think they put it out on Tuesday or Wednesday. Sounds like you're I think you losing be, your voice a little bit. A little bit, laryngitis, yeah, a little bit. A little laryngitis. You know why I'm making the speech tonight? It's a lot. But, um, yeah, they, they should be putting it out, I think, over the next few days. Mr. Trump, you said that terrorist families should be targeted. Does that include children? I will comment on that at a little bit later date, but we have to start looking at families now. We have to look at them very, very tough. The wives know what, generally speaking, the wives know what's going on. I believe that the sister of the killer, I watched her interviewed, I think she knew what was going on. What did you be I think his, excuse me, I think his mother knew what was going on. She went into the apartment. Anybody that went into that house or that apartment knew what was going on. They didn't tell the authorities. They knew what was going on. The mother knew. I think the sister interviewed, I think she knew. We what better get a little tough and a little smart or we're in trouble. But how do you ensure that innocent civilians are not being targeted? Innocent civilians are being targeted. They're the people that got killed. Those are the people that are the innocent people. Innocent people are being killed because we're trying to be so politically correct. Not gonna happen anymore. Mr. Trump, Bush at 3%, who is your biggest threat right now? I don't know. I think I'd have to ask you, because you did the poll. Ted right? Cruz is at 16%. Well, that's fine. I mean, so it may be Ted, maybe Marco. Whoever's, you know, closest, but it seems that Marco is doing a little bit better. I don't look at it as competition, to be honest. They can't do what I do. Nobody can do. Nobody's going to do what I do. But Ted and Marco were sort of neck and neck behind, but they're a long way behind. But they will never be able to do what I do. What do you think is Cruz's biggest them? vulnerability? I'll tell you later if it becomes important. Okay, are we okay? Yep.